All right, good day, everybody. Mike here, Northeastern Dirt and Property Maintenance. As you can see, I'm gonna do a video on these two tractors. Now, the objective of this video is not to piss off coyote owners or Kubota owners or either one is, I'm just comparing these two tractors and it's only gonna be a comparison and I'm gonna show you guys what's going on with these tractors in the hydraulic circuitry really because like I said they're both good tractors and I'll show you a couple things on the Coyote now that I've ran it this winter in the snow something that to me I really don't like with this Coyote tractor compared to a Kubota and not only will I tell you that I don't like it I'll prove to you right now why Kubota has superior hydraulics on their tractors it's just a fact and I mean, I'm not, I'm not just saying this to uh, wrap off at the gums, but I'm going to show you why Kubota has such good refined hydraulics on their equipment because, yes, I'm pro Kubota, but I also give everything a fair chance too. When somebody's manufacturing something, I want to look at the good and the bad, and I want to compare, see what's going on. So I bought this Coyote tractor because I wanted a cab tractor. But as soon as I bought this Coyote tractor and I started working it, for a couple hours straight moving snow after two snowstorms because it takes me a good hour and a half of steady work pretty much to clean my whole parking area out here about 700 feet of gravel the parking lot in front of the shop it takes about a good hour and a half and maybe two hours sometimes of just taking it easy and working the machines and i'll show you what i found right away after my first round of snow pushing with this coyote but anyway here's what we got today you guys we still have the l2501 by the way this tractor is for sale and uh i put it on facebook marketplace i put it on kijiji and uh it's out there across a few websites so it's gonna sell there's no doubt about it and so this tractor here i think it's got 370 hours 374 original hours on this Kubota and uh, hey always been maintained always been inside and I've never beat the shit out of the tractor either so I've always taken the best care I could so if somebody was looking for a good little L2501 I got one here and uh, 374 hours I don't care this tractor here is gonna last somebody a long time but anyway that's not what this video is about so we got the L2501 one Kubota right here and just for counterweight and I just set it up and put it on the other day because I wanted to get it out on the tractor anyway I put that uh, archway blower on that thing and that L2501 like I said it handles that uh, blower no problem at all and even if it was wet heavy snow well like I said before take a smaller bite with the blower if you don't think the tractor can handle it that's all I do but this, this L2501, it doesn't have a lot of problem handling this blower at all. So there's the setup of that right there. All right, and as I said earlier, the reason I bought this uh, Coyote tractor was because of the hours, where it came from, and uh, it had minimal use, and like I said, one owner brand new. But anyway, I bought it solely because I found out after pushing snow up here last winter, the winter before, I have to have pretty much a cab on a tractor. Open station, an open station like this Kubota. And like I say, if you don't have bad winters and you're maybe in Southern Ontario and the winters aren't so bad, no problem. I, I, I ran open station since 2015, no problem. But when you come up in here to the north where you get snowstorms sometime and you do get snow, I have to have a cab on the tractor, a cab with heat and uh, last time i used this tractor pushing snow i think it was minus 14 during the day and it went down to minus 29 that night so it was cold man and you want to be protected that's just the way it is up here but anyway after running this 3510 coyote i notice one major item and i'm going to show you guys we're going to run both tractors and i'm going to show you i found one major chink in this thing's armor I found a flaw in the hydraulic system and I do not like it and uh, I like the tractor but I don't really like the hydraulic system on this tractor and uh, for the average guy 
who's not working this tractor every day landscaping or just doing repetitive loader work it's not an issue uh, this tractor does everything I want it to do and uh, it meets most of my expectations but hydraulically I'll tell you the circuitry on this Coyote the hydraulics are not refined they are not even close to a Kubota and I'll show you why we're gonna get in and we're gonna do some work with this and then we're gonna work the, uh, the Kubota and I'm gonna show you the difference all right so here we go I'm in the tractor I gotta shut off so you guys can hear me good one thing about this coyote tractor like we're talking about hydraulics here this uh, control lever for your control valves your loader control valve here and like I said before I complained about this before this lever is stiff okay there is no doubt about it it may be to a lot of people in a much more ergonomic position but I find running this, this is much stiffer, this control lever, the way it works and the way you have to work it, than the Kubota up here. And I'm going to show you what goes on. Because of the way these Coyote hydraulics are set up on this tractor, you cannot split, func split functions on this tractor. You cannot split two functions on this tractor at the same time or it becomes incredibly slow. And not only that, it's stiff. So this Coyote Hydraulics, they are not refined like Kubota. And when I say split function, what I'm making reference to is the way Coyote has their hydraulics set up, they've got their valving set up so you get one primary function that takes the bulk of your oil first, and then you get your secondary function that'll kick in ever so slightly with the remaining oil, and it will not allow you to do two functions at once efficiently. Yes, you can do two functions at once, but it's incredibly slow because one valve, one circuit is robbing from the other circuit, and that's where I think Coyote made a big mistake. I don't know if the newer, like the NX tractors and all that are like that now, but I can tell you this uh, CK series tractor that I'm on right now, they are not as efficient as they should be when it comes to tractor hydraulics. And I'm going to show you why. <laughs> fairness we're going to run each tractor at 1800 rpm so no problem with this coyote right here one function no problem but when you are working this tractor all day if you own topsoil landscaping company and you're doing repetitive work all day i can tell you right now Kubota kills this Coyote tractor hydraulically. And I'm not talking about lifting capacity, none of that other stuff. I'm talking about smoothness of ergonomics and two functions at once. So when you stab into this pile, you lift and then you dump. You can hardly lift and dump at the same time with this tractor because of the priority in each valve and where it is in the circuit. So I'm making reference again to the ability of this tractor to lift and dump and curl. You're curling and I'm trying to curl and lift at the same time very slow and that's not a big deal if you're not doing it repetitively time and time again. And to a lot of guys buying their first tractor, they would think that this is normal and it would make no difference to them whatsoever. And that's okay. I'm not criticizing Coyote, but what I'm saying is I think they're a little bit unrefined in their, well, I know they are. And when you're going and you want to work hard and you're going, you want to bust into a pile, you want to lift and dump, lift and dump. And I'm trying right now to lift and dump, but it's very difficult and it's very choppy. you got to try and find a sweet spot in this stick 
to do two functions at once and even if you do you will not get it in equilibrium if you guys know what I'm saying you just can't going down and rolling and up and rolling you cannot do it effectively with a coyote not like a Kubota so we're up we're loading now we want to dump so look it Look how slow that is. That's the sweet spot right there. So if you're pushing all day or you're in the winter time, and let's just say, let's say you had to use a bucket or you had to pile snow high, just in this example, forget box blades, we'll talk about buckets. And you had to work on a night shift or anywhere. You want to get in and you want to get out. Like, I want this thing up and dumping at the same time. And it is uh, very inefficient when it comes to that. Going down. So hopefully you guys can see what I mean. And I'll show you the Kubota. Let's get in here. Let's say we're stacking snow. So to do, like I say, to do two functions, roll that bucket and lift your uh, front end loader at the same time, this tractor is not very effective. It could be more effective. And they should redesign them hydraulics a little bit. All right, so I brought the Kubota out here. Now we're on the Kubota. Watch the speed of the bucket on the rollback. Not just the lift, but like I say, two functions at once. Watch the lift and the roll up and down and watch how smooth and how less of a struggle it is when you're running the Kubota compared to the Coyote. Let's get in here tight. As you can see, and I'm trying to be as fair as I can, both these tractors at 1800 RPM. But I can tell you, I normally don't even run that Kubota tractor at 1800 RPM. I'm usually about 16, maybe 17, 1750. Not too often I run that Kubota at 1800 RPM. I really don't have to. It's not a DPF machine. I don't lug it, but I normally don't even have to rev it that high to do the work. But anyway, 
You see how with the Kubota, you can lift and you can roll that bucket at the same time and everything is so much quicker and more efficient with the Kubota when it comes to plunging in the pile, rolling back, breaking out, and then tipping. I did nothing different on this Kubota. It's just the way the hydraulics are set up. It's much more responsive. It's much smoother, and you can do a split function, such as lift and roll at the same time, much better than you can do with the Coyote. <laughs> Okay, so I tried to show you a little bit of a unbiased uh, front end loader work with both these tractors. Now, I can tell you why the Kubota is better. And like I said in the cab of the Coyote before I got in there, Kubota is much more refined. They seem to be ahead of a lot of these other tra tractor manufacturers when it comes to hydraulics. Not only smooth, but how they deliver from their pumps through their valve stack directional control to where the work is done to the front end loader. Kubota seems to have that much more refined and they can balance a circuit, I think, a lot better than obviously Coyote because Kubota can give almost priority flow to both functions at once with the front end loader raising and lowering and the curl. Yes, and the rollback in the Kubota, you do lose some flow, I see that but not near what the Coyote is. Kubota will break out and roll right through it. Pretty good. As where the Coyote, it's going to put priority flow to whatever function you hit first. Like that front end loader, if you're lifting, that gets full priority and it'll lift up and it'll break out quick. It'll do whatever you want. But uh, you cannot combine the lift with the roll at the same time because roll gets very minimal flow and it's slow. And like I said, unless you've driven Kubota, you may not understand what I'm saying. And like I say, I'm not, I kind of am criticizing Coyote and I'll tell you why, because I think they can do better. Maybe the new ones are better because if Kubota, the Japanese can do it, so can these Koreans and all they got to do is set up their hydraulics differently. They have to meter their valves different and they have to set up their uh, manifolds different so they can adjust that flow to where it's needed. It might not be perfect, but they can definitely put more flow where it's needed in a secondary function. That's my opinion. Well, I know they can do it because the Japanese can do it. And But I think Coyote doesn't do it because it's cheaper and that's the way they get a little bit of cheaper tractor too. It's cheaper, it's easier, possibly even less problematic, but not really. So that's, I think, why Coyote does it. It's for simplicity for them. Uh, it's easier to put a, a hydraulic system together like that. And uh, I think that's why they do it. It just keeps the cost down and it's just a simpler setup possibly. But anyway, and like I said, a lot of guys were raving about this uh, stick controller on the Coyote. To be quite honest, I find it, like I said, to be very stiff. 
If I'm working for an hour and a half and I've got this machine running at, you know, 1800 to 2000 RPM, and I'm working this machine to get a job done here for, for you know, 90 to 120 minutes, I want to get the job done. I'm tired of pushing snow. And I find that this Coyote tractor is very, I know it's stiff. If you run the Kubota joystick and you run the Coyote, there is no comparison. Your treadle, your your uh, pedals are stiffer. The hydraulics are just stiffer overall on this. They're, uh, I'm looking, they're choppy. They're more choppy on a Coyote. And I'm going to show you something else. So I find this here, this is definitely more stiffer. And when you're trying to do two functions, it becomes incredibly hard to hit that two o'clock lift and roll it's very difficult and it's very stiff. And I find, you know what? If you want to build your forearms, man, buy a Coyote. If you're working it all day long, if you want to build some forearms, you get on that thing because you're going to build them with this tractor. But I'm going to show you something else. And it just goes to show you the hydraulics, not just this. I'm going to show you right now. Let's go to the back end. And let's talk hydraulics here. The, these hydraulics are choppy and they're quick. Not saying they don't work, I'm just saying if you're inside the tractor, you can really chatter these hydraulics. You try not to, but unless you move the function really quick, if you try and do slow adjustments with this Coyote, it's very choppy. Now, I'm going to show you the Kubota. All right, let's do a Kubota. And I'll even do it at an idle where you're more apt to get chopped. trying to make this chop. I'm feathering this. I'm actually trying to get a choppy response out of these hydraulics. So we can get into flow rates, we can get into pressure settings, we can get into, you know, the size of lines to the front end loader and everything else out there, but you can do everything in the world you want, but if your hydraulic circuit valving wise and manifold wise isn't set up to accommodate that flow that's coming and that pressure that's coming, you can fool around all day long and you know what, unless you've got it balanced, me personally, I'd say, you know what, you're banging your head against the wall. And one thing I'm going to show you on the Coyote, right there, Coyote's got quarter inch lines. One thing about the Coyote, right there, you got a quarter inch line. Not that it's going to make much difference. And looking at the Kubota, just by looking at it, you've got a 3 8 line. So Coyote runs a quarter inch line. And looking at this without even measuring it, I'm going to say that's a 3 8 line on a front end loader of the Kubota. Now that being said, 
Coyote runs more GPM. They run more gallons and more flow out of their pumps than Kubota. So I don't know what the pressure setting is, mind you. I know the Kubota puts out about 2,200 and change. I couldn't find it on the Coyote. But my point is, Coyote needs to do some refinement. So anyway, thanks for tuning in, you guys. And that's what I wanted to show you with this tractor. And okay, now I'm going to give you my personal opinion. If I was buying a tractor and I was working it all day for business reasons, which I don't work by tractors in my business, very little. It's always an excavator, skid steer, whatever. But if I was buying a tractor for everyday use, wear and tear, ergonomics, and uh, just pushing it all day long, for me, I would not buy a Coyote. From what I've seen, I would not buy a Coyote because of the hydraulics. I don't find, like I said, I don't find these hydraulics. They're they're hard on your arm. I, I'm just telling you what I see and what I find as where that Kubota or the Kubota's got a much more refined hydraulic system. Smooth, ergonomically, it's actually easier on your body, the Kubota, than the Coyote. And that's all done through engineering. I know some of you Coyote guys are going to disagree or, and that's fine. But like I say, when you put them, side by side and you actually run both of them you can help but feel the difference but that being said if you're not working this tractor all day long and you're a hobby farmer or even a guy like me pushing snow and the average guy might put he might put a hundred hours a year on his tractor or whatever there's absolutely nothing wrong with this is a great tractor i can't criticize it but i just wanted to show you guys the difference between the two tractors so Thanks for tuning in, and uh, that's it for this video. Thanks for tuning in, you guys, and I'll see you on the next one. But I just wanted to get that out there, uh, what I'm finding with these tractors this winter.